Today I am continuing my field test with the Winsor & Newton pigment markers. Um, they kindly sent me the Winsor & Newton pigment marker pad because um, I'd written to them and asked what they recommended I use. Um, I was actually looking for a pen that would work um, on Yupo with the pigment markers. And I listed all the papers I had tried and all the pins I had tried, and they were like, well, let's, we're going to send you our marker pad. So um, thank you very much, Cole Arts and Windsor and & Newton, for sending me the marker pad. I really appreciate it. It makes doing these reviews a lot easier. I can <laughs> spend that money instead on buying more colors. Um, this is the set I currently have of Windsor & Newton pigment markers. I have the six-piece portrait set which has a white blender, uh, burnt umber, burnt umber light, parchment, light sienna, and portrait pink. And I have them swatched right here. And then I have um, kind of a piecemeal open stock set that has the white blender, the colorless blender, henna. Um, sorry, I'm trying to look at the color because I think it's potter's pink. Yeah, potter's pink, um, light rose, rose, carmine, Windsor red, Windsor red deep. I think this is magenta, yeah, magenta blue shade, Windsor Violet Dioxine Light, Royal Blue Indigo, Blue Gray, Thalo Teal Light, Forest Green, Green Gold, Sap Green, Windsor Yellow, Yellow Orange Light, Sepia, um, Warm Gray Number 4, Warm Gray Number 3, and black and I have that swatch right here but that's not going to be on camera so I prepared a piece ahead of time and I already erased it and um, before I get started coloring I would like to point out that the Windsor and Newton pigment marker paper um, I inked it with a Sailor Mitsuo Ida which is an alcohol base I mean it's not alcohol based but it is waterproof and it's alcohol marker proof it won't smear um, and it works on most papers unfortunately with this paper when I erased with my standard mono eraser which works on pretty much everything it ghosted the ink it made the ink kind of gray um, and I also had trouble erasing some areas um, and I had used a very light hand when sketching this out so that's something to keep in mind. Um, it's a very thin paper with um, a very, very smooth surface. So you might want to use your light box to transfer your image. Um, and I recorded some of this, but I think my card filled up. Um, the first test I did was with uh, alcohol-based markers, um, like translucent alcohol-based markers, like Copic markers, using the marker paper with the Sailor Midsole Ida. And I have some notes on that. If you're interested in that, check out the video I'll be posting and um, make sure you check out the, the overall blog post where I cover all of these things. So today I'm going to be coloring this illustration of Kara using the portrait set and my open stock set and talking to you guys about these markers because this is the paper the pigment markers were designed to be used on. Um, and I've done a couple of videos, they haven't been uploaded yet but I've already done a couple of videos about my thoughts on these markers and kind of putting these markers through their paces on different papers. So if you're interested in that, make sure you scroll through the markers, um, marker review section, I guess playlist. So you can see, maybe I have to zoom in more. Sorry about that. You can see that the Sailor Mitchell Ida ink is already smearing when I put the alcohol on top of it. It basically reactivates it. So you want to be careful how many times, especially on light areas like um, some skin tones, you want to be careful how many times you rework it. And um, I found with the alcohol based markers, uh, alcohol markers tend to sit on top of the paper rather than soaking in. So if you're someone like me who likes using cardstock or Bristol or even watercolor paper um, with your markers because there's like a lot more range for blending and layering, that you're going to have to change how you think about coloring up markers if you want to use this paper. And Cole Arts also sent me a pack of their marker paper, 
Um, so I'm going to be talking about like their um, alcohol-based marker, not their pigment marker paper. So I'm going to be talking about that soon, probably when I have a field test or two to demonstrate with. So since the um, pigment markers don't have a brush tip, I'm using the chisel tip to apply color as I'm not really a fan of um, bullet nibs and I think it would probably be too scrubby. And I'm trying to clean the black Mitsuo Ida ink off of my nib. Um, see, it's getting bad on the foot. I'm trying to clean that off when I can. So I'm gonna let that layer dry. It'll take a little bit longer. And then I'm going to try and apply um, a couple of additional layers. These markers used on the proper paper really, for me, they're very challenging because they don't perform the way I expect alcohol-based markers. And it forces me to rethink how I do things. And I've been using alcohol-based markers for 10 year, about 10 years now. So it's um, a little bit difficult for me to change how I think but I'm trying. So I'm using a little bit of the portrait pink um, on her cheeks and her nose and it's very difficult for me to um, put this in because I'm still using that bullet nib, I mean the chisel nib. So it takes a very light hand. And this layer is also reactivating the Mitsuo Ida. If any of you guys have found an ink that works with the pigment markers that isn't reactivated by the solvents used inside, please let me know. I'd really like to find one. I'm not super stuck on the Mitsuo Ida, it's just something that I know typically works. And this piece was allowed to dry for more than 24 hours before I even erased it, um, which is usually sufficient. Um, if you find your markers are making your ink bleed, uh, depending on the paper, it may be because you haven't allowed them to dry fully, especially on papers with a coating, it may take longer. really not happy about how the on this paper the alcohol is reactivating the Sailor Mitsuo Ida ink. Um, I've inked, I mean I've used um, pigment markers and the Sailor Mitsuo Ida before in my Strathmore Tone Tan sketchbook which has an entirely different coating and surface texture and I've never had this problem in that sketchbook but I have had problems with reactivation on um, synthetic papers like Yupo. So there's something about the surface of this paper. And as you can see, I'm also getting, for something that's this small, I'm also getting a lot of streaking. Um, it's hard for me to build up layers of color that don't show the marker lines, but that was an issue in this alcohol marker piece as well. The nice thing, though, about um, the pigment markers is they're showing up a little more opaque. I had a problem with the markers seeming, be like, their application on this one were all pa very much pastel, much more pastel than the markers swatch on regular paper. So it is nice that these markers are a little more color true. Although, I will say, the black ink smearing is very frustrating. Oh, and see, I'm trying to use the bullet nib, and I'm not even getting, like, hardly any application at all. Instead, it just wants to push around. Which is weird, because that nib's working. Anyway, it looks pretty messy and gross right now. And I mean, it could also be um, 
my subject matter. I mean, I'm wholly w willing to admit uh, a fair amount of user error on my end. I'm still struggling to make these work, and I'm still trying to reconcile with um, years of using alcohol-based markers in completely different ways. So I think I'm going to try to even out the skin a little bit with the white blender, which is my favorite, because there really isn't anything else like it on the market. Um, it's an opaque white blender, and it will pick up and redistribute your pigments slightly, which is fine if you're having problems like I'm having today. But once you've applied the white blender, it will affect the colors you put on top of it. So be careful in your application. Don't just use it as a form of white out because it's going to be white out that's always affecting your color. You can put color on top of it. It'll just be slightly lighter than it would have been. And I'm kind of cheating and using it to hide all of my ugly mistakes. And smooth out the skin tone. And I think this would be a little bit easier to do if there was a brush tip instead of just um, a bullet nib, which just pushes the pigment around. It doesn't necessarily put seem to put pigment down, and a chisel nib, which is hard to maneuver into smaller places. And while Windsor Newton did send me the um, the marker paper, I'm not an affiliate of Windsor Newton. Um, I am an independent reviewer, so my opinions are my own, and any advice that I give you isn't necessarily officially sanctioned advice unless I mention that it's from their website. I did try to do a significant amount of research about these markers. I was very excited about them when they were announced because they just seem so different from anything else on the market. But it was, I, in the beginning, it was, ah, oh, it really smeared right there. Can you see how, I guess I have to zoom in. See, I went to, to like darken the color under her arm and it, and I mean, if you are careful, you can kind of pick that back up. It's just very frustrating to constantly have muddy areas on your drawing because the ink I'm using is reactivating the. So um, I'm really looking for something that specifically will work with the Windsor Newton pigment markers. Um, I appreciate if you, for any suggestions you throw my way, I've already tried um, Copic Multiliners, I've tried Sakura Microns, um, I have not tried India Ink this time, but in the past I've had problems with India Ink um, becoming reactivated when you add Copic marker or an alcohol-based marker on top of it. I do have Kaime Soul K, which is designed to be used with alcohol-based markers, and I may have to pull it out. Oh, I'm sorry, I bopped the camera. I may have to pull my Kaime Soul K out and give it a shot because this is really frustrating and I really want to make this work. And I have a piece of scrap paper on the side where I'm kind of um, removing the black or even the white, the colorless blender that I'm picking up a little bit as I'm applying further layers of marker. So um, if you like heavy application of black ink to your work, you're going to have to wait until you finish using, using the markers because it will reactivate it and it'll make it a mess.
and I might actually be able to just use pencil with these. In general, you don't want to use pencil with your alcohol-based markers because it'll the graphite will ruin your nibs. Um, and these don't have replaceable nibs, so if that were a thing that happened, it would basically mean I'd ruined a $5 marker. Um, but it's worth finding out because if it does work, well, at least that's a, one solution. As you can see, I really am having trouble with the skin. It's really difficult with, um, with only a bullet tip, which I'm having trouble using and um, a chisel nib. Her face is particularly, it's particularly obvious that I'm struggling with that. It was actually much easier. Oh, let's see if I have that example where I can grab it. Yeah, It's actually much easier when I did the um, portrait review um, test piece because this is on, um, this isn't even on the same paper, and it wasn't pulling up the Mitsuo Ida ink. This is on Strathmore's acrylic paper, which has a plastic coating and a, like a pressed on canvas texture. Um, and they behaved a lot better on, they were easier to control and blend on this than they are on Windsor and Newton's marker paper. And Windsor Newton's marker paper is very, very thin, as I have a lot of trouble erasing on this paper because, I mean, even if you're holding it securely, it wants to go every which way and tear and wrinkle and shear. So for like um, small detailed illustrations like comics or commi some commissions, you really want um, a brush nib or a bullet nib that can handle tearing through, not tearing through, but applying um, pigment on top of such a lot of layers without everything turning to mud or looking like a hot mess, which is the problem I'm having right now. So, so far I think these markers perform, in my opinion, these markers perform best on the Strathmore acrylic paper and I'm going to continue to test on papers until I find one that I like and I encourage you to do the same because um, my recommendations should only serve as a starting point for you it shouldn't be the end all be all and don't feel discouraged if something I like isn't working for you or if something you like isn't something I recommend because we probably have very different working styles and different needs. Most of what I've seen, um, the artist Strathmore has employed, not Strath, I'm sorry, Cole Arts and Windsor Newton. Most of the artists I've seen them employ have very, very loose gestural sort of drawing styles, um, kind of minimalistic which probably really works in these markers' favor. If you have a detailed style and you tend to draw small, these markers are going to be very, very difficult for you to use, I think, um, unless you're comfortable with applying the details in marker rather than sketching them out first or marking them in pen. I'm also noticing that as I'm applying more layers of uh, pigment, the m paper is starting to buckle a little bit and I actually taped it down for my own convenience so it wouldn't be all over the place. I don't know if I can zoom in enough. Let me move that so it's not... I don't know if you can see that it's buckling but it is. Um, and that's something else that's interesting about Windsor Newton pigment markers is um, they are alcohol based but water soluble and that means you can blend them out with water a little bit but on this kind of thin paper with a coating I really don't think that's a good idea because if they're 
if there's if the paper is starting to buckle a bit from me just using the marker it's not going to take layers of of water very well some of the areas where um, the marker gave me trouble it actually is working in my favor because it looks like I'd already applied some of Kara's freckles um, so it it's fine in this illustration which is really just a test illustration to show you guys how the marker paper handles with the markers anyway um, it's just something to be aware of um, especially if you're hoping for smoothly applied skin tones you're probably not going to be able to achieve that at this size with this paper now I wish I could turn it because I want to apply the sky in a way that is comfortable for my hand. Um, I think I'm just going to have to do my best. And probably be all up in the camera, so my apologies. And unlike alcohol, well, okay, with alcohol markers, if you want to reduce streaking, you saturate the area first, either with colorless blender or with a lighter blending color or with the color that you plan on um, using for the whole thing. And the reason you do that is so the dye can dissipate into the paper evenly. Um, and because these markers are such a unique hybrid, I don't know how well that's going to work, especially considering how everything just sort of sits on top of the paper. And um, the fact that it sits on the paper means that it can kind of be blended, although I haven't even pulled out for this piece. I haven't even pulled out the, the colorless blender yet. I might use that on her dress. We'll find out. We'll see. colors it achieves are very nice and dark, uh, very pigmented, very saturated colors. I'm really, really missing that uh, flexible Japanese style brush. I really hope Winsor Newton opts to bring that in. That would make a great addition to these markers. It would make them a lot more usable to illustrators and comic artists like myself. Maybe also a thicker paper with um, the same the same coating, or also um, pins designed to work with both these papers and these markers would be nice. But that might be that might be kind of a long Christmas wish list. So these markers take a moment to dry before you can start um, adding deeper layers of the same color. Let's try, oh, see with this, this is sky blue, no I'm sorry, blue gray on top of indigo and you can see it is actually doing a pretty good job just blending with very little effort on my part. It's picking up that pigment and moving it for me, which I like very easy to just kind of like hash that in really quick although you can't then go over the color to oh cat underfoot you can't go over that color to darken it because that'll get rid of your blend um, and for finicky little fine areas like this 
it's going to be really difficult to get that to work because I'm not at a good angle and I can't rotate my paper. And I'm trying not to block the camera, although I'm pretty sure I am. And I don't want to rest my hand on this. Oh shoot, I messed that up. I don't want to rest my hand on this paper, especially where I've applied ink because it seems like it's the sort of thing to want to stay on your hand and get all over everything you've done. Now what I could do is go in and work back and forth with the indigo and the blue-gray to kind of build up layers of color and have an even smoother transition with fewer streaking, less streaking. These are really the sort of markers where you have to be comfortable with the media behaving like what it is. That might be a problem for some artists who have to have a high level of polish on everything um, so that you can't necessarily tell if they're using marker or watercolor or digital because everything is so polished and so rendered and so uh, finished. And with these pigment markers the way they are, um, it's just not really necessarily easy to, to achieve. It's not, achieving that would be very difficult, at least for me. But I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing. I personally really love artists whose work looks like the media they're working in. Um, where you can see some of the lines, maybe not on the skin, but like in the background or on the clothing. Um, things are a little sketchier, more gestural. So you can see where I had to pick up my brush, it left kind of like a halo of, well, it's hard actually for you to see. There, now you can see that it leaves a halo of sorts around the character because I've had to pick up and set down my brush so many times. I guess I could have masked Kara off and just continued my lines straight across and hoped that the masking paper didn't cause a disruption in the pen flow, the pen's movement. problems here around her nose. Just it's kind of a finicky area to try and get with a big bullet nib. So, something you could probably do to facilitate better blending is on um, like a scrap piece of Yupo or s scrap plastic even, you could um, apply some of the color you want to influence the next color you're laying down. So for example, I'm applying um, blue-gray on top of indigo so I can get a better transition from indigo to blue-gray. 
So I would maybe consider putting down the indigo on a piece of scrap plastic and then uh, like scrubbing some of that onto. Oh wow, that's like really messing that up. Scrubbing it onto my nib to better influence the color. And this is the white blender that I like so much. I mean, it's not having as much of an influence on the blue-gray as I had hoped. It's picking it up, though, onto the marker itself. But it's not really adding an opaque layer of white on top of it. Pretty easy to clean off, though. You can just scrub it off onto your scrap piece of paper. So I need to let that dry and then um, color in her dress and also maybe try, um, I don't know, to salvage her, her lip that got covered up by the blue because I was having such a hard time. It isn't sticking to my dry fingers, but that is a possibility. Let's see if I can very gently move that blue that got put there with colorless blender. It looks mostly like skeleton, not like corpse gray though, which is not a good, not a good look. It's also reactivating that, um, the Mitsuo Ido, which is why I've been avoiding using my colorless blender on this. And when I render with markers anyway, I don't really use colorless blender a whole lot. But as you can see, the colors are already more intense. Oh, wrong way to do a side by side. The colors are already more intense on this particular paper than they were when I used the alcohol based markers. So um, to keep it in the Winsor Newton family, if you're using the Pro Marker brush markers, you might want to use their. Winsor Newton's regular marker paper as opposed to the Winsor Newton pigment marker marker paper for your pro art markers. And I think a red would look good for her dress and maybe cover up some of the wouldn't be so noticeable when the Mitsuo Ida reactivates and smears everywhere. And if I can find an ink or a um, uh, lining material, I mean really what you might have to do is um, do your line art on a separate piece of paper, color this over a light box, and then digitally assemble the two. So, oh man, it's making that ink bleed. Um, so that's another technique we might explore together. I don't think I currently have any line arts that I would want to test that with, but I could probably knock one out fairly quickly. And I have a light box, so. At least then I wouldn't have to worry so much about smearing black ink into skin tones. And since I have to move the, let me zoom in, because I'm having to move the nib around so much in order to hit all the nooks and crannies, but I can't just like evenly apply a base coat because it reactivates this ink, I end up with like very gestural all over the place brush strokes which um, I'm really not used to in general with alcohol based markers or marker papers I mean um, if you're like markering on tracing paper that's that's just like what it is I mean it's tracing paper it's not meant to take markers they just sit on top and it has a very cool effect 
but you know that going into well now you know that going into it if you've never done it before now you know and the same goes for vellum you can you can render on vellum you just have to limit how many layers you, you're planning on doing because vellum can only take so much it just sits on top same as with this However, if I was using a white table, I wouldn't have to be as persnickety about avoiding my ink, um, so I might be able to get smoother lines. I don't mind that they're lines. My problem is, in order to hit all the nooks and crannies, I've had to twist my marker all over the place. Um, if it was like straight, sort of a oh, gestural line coming, radiating from where the dress meets the bodice, it would look, it would look appropriate for the image, but it's not. I'm going to try to clean up this where the blue went over, well blue and white actually, down here at the bottom. That's really what the colorless blender is best at doing in my opinion, is um, clean, <laughs> cleaning up messes. And I'm going to have to let that dry before I can put anything else on there, the same as I'm going to have to allow this to dry too. So I'll be back in a minute. Okay. So, um, my first layer of Carmine Red, which is what I'm using for, or just Carmine, which is what I'm using for her dress is dried, so I'm going to apply the next layer. And already I goofed and I got some on her skin. And the problem with these markers is, um, with regular alcohol-based markers, you have a couple choices. You can kind of, well first of all, red is a staining color, so red is usually a problem when you get it in a place it shouldn't be. Um, yellows are very fugitive colors. If you get them somewhere they don't belong, you can very easily just pop that original color on top of it and it won't, it'll get rid of the yellow. Um, but red is a little harder to get rid of. Um, sometimes you just have to make peace and ignore it. You can also cover it with a much darker color and you can try to push it out with colorless blender to make it less noticeable. With this, I may just go along with it because I'm already having a lot of difficulties um, sort of rendering this illustration with the chisel nib. We ought to have like a chisel nib challenge. <laughs> because I think I am ready for it. Not ready to win, just ready, <laughs> ready to throw down. I think I might try to try to cover it up and maybe, okay, all right, okay, awesome, perfect. So these markers pick up very easily. You can basically scrub it away with the chisel nib. Um, which is another call for a nice soft um, Japanese style brush nib because then you could maybe layer things a little better without um, it just scrubbing it off. But it worked for what I wanted so I should be happy, right? And I know this kind of looks like a mess. I'm still figuring this paper out. I'm still figuring out these markers on this paper and you guys by this point in time are no strangers to watching me struggle but I hope that inspires you instead of I don't know any other emotions it might elicit I hope it inspires you to do to give it your own shot to give it to give it a try so let's see I'm kind of thinking um, Windsor Red Deep, but that might be too red, too deep, too red, too deep, too furious. Um, and Windsor Red, I don't know, Carmine is a very pink red. Maybe I ought to use Carmine and Windsor Red Deep, which is kind of a brick, a brickish red. And I mean, it just like sits on top of the paper at this point, which is kind of interesting because like I keep saying these are so different from what I'm used to when it comes to alcohol markers that it's really refreshing because it seems like every company 
needs to throw their hat into the alcohol ring. I'm really kind of surprised Crayola hasn't, because they Crayola has the portfolio line, which is um, art aimed at artists. I'm kind of surprised they haven't done alcohol markers. Because every other company has. I mean, I just posted, it'll be old news by the time this video goes up, but I just did a, my post on Artist Loft alcohol-based markers just went live, and following that is a post on Hobby Lobby's artist markers. Which, both of those are alcohol-based markers, since that's the topic we're talking about. And they all pretty much perform like Copics or Prism Co Maybe not as good, but they all have like the same basic performance. None of them really break the mold. And the pigment markers are so different. They're hard for me to work with, but I mean, that's just exciting for, for me. I'm just like, yeah, all right, it's a challenge, let's do this. I guess that's embracing the suck. I know I'm gonna be bad at it, so like there's only one way to go, and that's up. I'm just sort of blending that Windsor red out a little bit because it is so streaky with the carmine red. I'm gonna have to clean the nib off. Since at this point the pigments really just sit on top of the paper, um, which makes for very painterly effects, but it also means you should clean your nibs. don't over scrub because you will pick up layers of color that you well I mean over scrub if you want to over scrub if you're like this area is too dark I need to lighten it back up again which is kind of what I'm doing or trying trying to accomplish But, um, I think it's probably, no, it's still not visible to you guys. You got, I mean, I'm also taking photos of this for the post. Because there's some things I can get with my camera from other angles that I can't get with my camcorder. I'm trying to capture how much this paper really wrinkles. Um, however, it will dry smooth if you, I guess if you taped it down. I haven't, I haven't experienced the wrinkling and then me trying to smooth it out. So when this dries, I'm going to add another layer of Windsor Red Deep, and then I'm going to um, maybe add some white highlights into the dress. Um, or I really what I want is like um, pink highlights. Kind of. I really just want to lighten that carmine up towards the viewer because the darker areas 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 would be this nightish. Except you have like this harsh transition, this this night tiny sky. Let's see if I can darken up the sky while I'm waiting on the dress to, to finish drawing. I don't know. Originally, it started with me thinking I'm just gonna do like a solid block of color behind her, and then. I was like, well, let's see if I could do a transition for you guys. Which is kind of difficult to do under these circumstances. Well, 
that's kind of better. Kind of not really. I mean, it really looks streaky. I don't know. I don't care all that much. Do you guys care all that much? Oh, it's very tacky, too. When you put your finger where the alcohol, like, areas of lots of um, ink, it's very tacky. Let's see if this pink, this pink really just wants to, like, pull up the lighter color, and the darker colors, which is kind of what I'm used to with alcohol-based markers. If you're, um, you really have to scrub to get that carmine off the nib, too. <clears throat> I mean, the, the way alcohol-based markers work is when you put more on your paper, it pushes the prior layers to the back of your piece of paper. At least with, um, like, card socks, Bristol's, watercolor papers, uncoated papers where your, your pigment is meant, or, I'm sorry, your ink is meant to sink into the paper. But this is the sort of paper that's designed for your pigments and your inks to sit on top of the paper. Um, really having trouble cleaning this off. So they can be kind of um, blended in a rougher, more painterly fashion. Um, and I'm not giving a judgment call about that one way or the other. It's just a different way of working. Um, so what, what happened when I added the light rose is it's the, the chisel nib literally scrubbed away layers of pigment that I had applied. Kind of like taking a paint knife <clears throat> to your, like your still wet oil painting to remove layers. So, I mean, that might be... A technique that works for you and that you're interested in. Um, and now I'm trying to like go back in with Carmine to kind of soften the transition between where I literally scrub pigment off the page and where I didn't scrub pigment off the page. And I'm having some difficulty doing that. Mostly because it wants to be light too. But we're almost done. I think I might add, um, usually I would do it with a cool gray, but I don't have any yet. So I'm going to use warm gray number three to add shadow underneath where she's sitting. Um, and then I'm going to use Windsor Red Deep to darken up the shadows again. And I think I might call it a video. Although I fear I've left you guys more confused than before I started rolling. If that's the case, I apologize. I'm really trying to figure this product out too. Okay, so when that dries, I'm going to blend that out with the white blender. Um, I guess I'll just let all of this dry for a minute. What I might end up doing, it's kind of cheesy cheesy, maybe if I did it with the colorless blender, I kind of want to do like a halo around her, which is going to flatten an already kind of flat image a lot, because when, when you add like a stark white halo, it just really reminds the viewer that what they're looking at is an illustration. Their suspension of disbelief is kind of shattered. Or, sorry, s suspension of belief. Yeah, there we go. Is kind of shattered. Um, but I, I don't know. I kind of feel like I can't lose anything anyway, because it's already kind of a mess. And it was a field test, so it's not like, it's not like I have to be that attached to it. And I used to use white Signo gel pens to do that and I've been getting just like bad batch after bad batch this one's a fresh one so I might use that to add white highlights I mean yeah I can use the white blender um, the problem with that is the white blender will definitely reactivate colors I'm not sure if the Signo will reactivate colors so we'll we can find out together I guess that's I know how much 
some illustrators love their jelly rolls and their signo pens and they're great like I used to use them a lot too it was only when I started getting bad doesn't want to work ones that I started using Copic opaque white with like a fine synthetic brush to do white highlights which isn't as handy but it's not it's nice it performs con consistently not as portable but I mean what it looks like. Not super great. That's kind of my own fault. And I'm also working on an illustration that I'm going to ink and then use the light box and um try and see how how ooh, that works okay yes yes the white blender is like such a saving grace with these things it's it's reactivated the, the pigment but it's also adding some some white to it seriously the white blender is like my favorite thing. I've I have three of them now. I have one in my opaque white kit, which I use in my tone tan sketchbook, or on top of like Copic or watercolor illustrations. I have one in the portrait set, and then I leave one in my regular set. So that way I'm not mixing. I'm not potentially mixing grays with skin tones. So I end up with zombie face. And I don't know if that is like a thing that would help you, but it makes sense to me, so feel free to try it. Seriously though, white. I got so excited when I found out that Ranger Distress uh, watercolor markers had a white, water-soluble, opaque marker picket fence and this behaves what the way I had wanted picket fence to work but it didn't so I really like it I know I'm probably not selling you guys on it right now because it's looking kind of gross and hot mess but it's seriously very different from what others have on the market. Alright, now to find out if Signal works. I bet it won't though. Let's see. Oh, mm, kinda. But not in any. Ooh, it picked up some of that red. It's always great. not in any really good capacity. It's not really what I was hoping. So I might actually just put it away. Be done with you. Let it dry and probably add the red on top of that. Kind of hide it. H hide how like stark it is forgotten the color in that. In that. In that. Yeah, this would be so much easier if there was a brush on this thing. There isn't. Okay. Alright, that's about done other than futzing around with the shadow. And the opaque white.
So I'm sure some of you guys have been playing around with pigment markers too. Um, and if you leave me a link in the comments to something you've done, either a video or just like a static drawing, I would love to check it out because I always love to see what you guys make. That is pretty much all I've got for this particular video at this particular time. I hope you guys have a good evening. Goodbye.